Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Diana is patient, and I am pretty ill. I've had some requests for some information about some of the rarer types of collagen disorders. I think that it's a great idea because it can be easy to assume too much and to slide into thinking that patients have either the classical form, the hypermobility form, or the vascular form of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Then we kind of give a nod to Lloyd's Dietz Syndrome and perhaps Marfan Syndrome. One form that I fear may be underdiagnosed is Stickler Syndrome. Now most of you know that my kids and I have the classical form of EDS, right? My wonderful husband loved to brag that he and his side of the family had perfect genes. Then we got the news that his cousin may have Stickler Syndrome. Whoa! Now this is important for doctors and patients to be aware of, and this type can have some specific eye manifestations. So you know I want to talk about that, right, too? Okay, I'll give you the basics so as not to lose my audience, okay? Basically, there are five types of Stickler Syndromes. They result from mutations in the COL2A1, COL11A1, COL11A2, COL9A1, and COL9A2 genes. Type 2, 9, and 11 collagen are components of the vitreous, the jelly in the back of the eye, if you will, cartilage, and other connective tissues. This leads to characteristic features in the Stickler patient. The presentations vary somewhat based on the type of Stickler syndrome, but the take-home message today involves many of the features that they all have in common. So first, most patients have underdeveloped bones in the middle of the face, including the cheekbones and the bridge of the nose. It results in sort of a flattened facial appearance. We also find a bifid uvula, that's a double or split uvula, the little hangy down thing in the back of the throat, okay? Here's a picture of one. Lloyd's Dietz syndrome patients may also have bifid uvulas too. Now let's dig deeper. Patients with Stickler syndrome are usually severely myopic or nearsighted, and the vitreous has an abnormal appearance when we look in the back of the eye. Glaucoma, and usually an increased pressure of the eye, is common. Cataracts, the clouding of the lens, is often present, and some retinal abnormalities may be present. The retina is the back layer inside of the eye, if you will. Okay, This is the appearance of a normal fundus, a picture of the back of the eye. The white disc here is a healthy optic nerve. The darker spot is the macula, what we used to see the details with, things we're looking at, okay? One sort of retinal degeneration that eye doctors will often see with Stickler syndrome, and in patients without Stickler syndrome, especially if they're highly nearsighted actually, is called lattice degeneration. This is seen in the far periphery of the retina, but it's easy to diagnose. It looks like a lacy crisscross pattern. Here, um, here's an eye with lattice retinopathy. I've circled the lattice degeneration for you. Can you see it? Lattice is not terribly uncommon, but we watch for retinal holes that can occur in the lattice degeneration. And if holes occur in lattice, especially if they're located superiorly, the patient is more prone to having a retinal tear and or detachment. Now, prophylactic treatment is encouraged, especially when the holes occur. This is what happened to the 26-year-old that you saw in the previous picture who had no prophylactic treatment. Whoa, I am so glad that wasn't my patient. Now, that is a massive retinal detachment. Here is a smaller retinal detachment. Other things that affect the patient will sound familiar. Hypermobility and early arthritis, back aches, etc. Scoliosis, abnormal curvature of the spine, or kyphosis, that hunched over curve to the spine, they're common. And something that is a big clue for most of us is a loss of hearing. We don't usually see that with most other connective tissue disorders, right? This hearing loss can even be severe. Now, I should mention Marshall syndrome here. We aren't sure if this syndrome is a variant of Stickler syndrome or is a separate disorder. It manifests with a distinctive facial appearance, eye abnormalities, hearing loss, early onset arthritis, etc. But in Marshall syndrome, the patient usually has a short stature, which we don't usually see with Stickler syndrome.
Now, for patients with Stickler syndrome, an eye examination with an eye doctor familiar with connective tissue disorders is important upon diagnosis. And in general, patients will be followed with eye examinations every six months or so, until about the age of five, then annually thereafter, depending. With lattice degeneration and high myopia, exams may need to be more frequent. And where can you find an eye doctor who's familiar with connective tissue disorders? Shameless plug for TotalEyeCare.com. That's the practice that my husband and I started after we got married. And it's used for a hub for most of the research studies. So, okay, I digress. An echo is also recommended to check for mitral valve prolapse and monitoring of the patient's hearing is especially important for children who may not realize that they're not hearing as well as other children. Cool? Okay, that's hitting the high spots, my friend. I'll attach some articles for further reading on my website, prettyill.com. By the way, the, web, the website will be revamped soon, but not soon enough for me, I'll tell you. Someone on Twitter pointed out that PDFs are not the very best way to share these articles, and we need some other updates, in a bad way. Ah, working on it. I hope to see you on the forum soon. I have been so impressed with the quality of folks who participate there. You guys, um, I am so grateful to, that you chose to spend time with us. Thank you so much. Um, let's keep each other going, my friends. This journey is not for the faint of heart. As many of you know, I rely on humor and music to help me through many a difficult time. I do so shamelessly. As I sit here with my pain level at about an eight, due to two torn rotator cuffs, I remember the wise words of Alan Klein. Humor does not dismiss the pain. It makes the space around the pain get bigger. Love that. Gentle hugs to you all. Bye-bye.